Good morning, everyone. We begin our service with hymn number 48, O Day of Radiant Glasses, 4-8. the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And blessed be Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Be 
with you. Let us pray. Lord, your continual mercy, O Lord, clearance and defend our church. And because it cannot continue in safety without your help, protect and govern it always by your goodness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Please be seated for today's readings. Our first reading is from the book of Exodus. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread, for you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them, whether they will follow my instruction or not. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening quails came up and covered the camp. And in the morning, there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The word of the Lord. <laughs> We shall read responsibly at the half of the asterisk, Psalm, 7, Psalm 78, verses 23 through 29. So he commanded the clouds above. He rained down manna upon them to eat. So the mortals ate the bread of angels. He caused the east wind to blow in the heavens. He rained down flesh upon them like dust. He let it fall in the midst of their camp. So they ate and were well filled. Our second reading is from the letter to the Ephesians. I, therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to, who, to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to, the, to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean that, that he all had also descended into the lower parts of the earth. He who descended is the same one who ascended far above the heavens, so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, 
to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. The word of the Lord. The gospel hymn, hymn number 522, 522. On the next day, when the people who remained after the feeding of the 5,000 saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? And Jesus answered them, Very truly, I tell you, you're looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? And Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. And so they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What works are you performing? Our ancestors ate man in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. And they said to him, Sir, give us that bread always. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart 
be always acceptable in thy sight. O God, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Not, not bad for two hours' notice. <laughs> the joys of having a father as a priest. <laughs> he calls you in a last minute. Thank you. This powerful Lutheran hymn portrays the plight of so many of God's children across the world, across our country, and even across the street. So many of our brothers and sisters go hungry in the world and in our nation, in our community, and even in our congregation. But the real question is, what are they really hungry for? Could it be that like this crowd chasing after Jesus, they and we all want a sign that God is still doing something great and new in our world. Something that we can trust. Something or someone that can undo all the bad circumstances and conditions that we human beings or mankind, whichever word you want to use, things that our leaders have created that we sometimes have to live in or live with in our lives. Who can we trust to undo all of that? The gospel for this week sets up in much the same way that the gospel from last week did. It draws attention to miracles that speak to Jesus' identity. It opens with the feeding of the 5,000 then Jesus came walking on water, the miracle where he came to the disciples while they were still out of sea and in rough weather. Jesus came to them in that rough weather to their boat. And they wanted Jesus to get into the boat, but immediately, in some miraculous way, the boat reached the land that they were going to. The implication is that Jesus did not get into the boat but that he continued on that journey across the sea from beginning to end. In other words, Jesus walked eight miles in the middle of the night in rough water. Mind-blowing, isn't it? The crowd is looking for that Jesus. 
A few of the 5,000 people actually crossed the sea in small boats after him because they knew, they knew where he was going next. They're still struggling with what had happened the day before. Is this man a prophet or is he a king? We have to understand who he is and therefore then we can trust him with our lives, with our country, and with all our people. But Jesus decided to unpack all of that nonsense right there and then. He decided to unpack and reveal what the sign actually meant. The sign is not about having your bellies filled with food. The sign is really about who Jesus is and what he does for us. Jesus had healed their sick and he had fed them. And the last time they saw him, they were trying to make him king. They desperately wanted that Davidic king who would provide for them daily and would be around them and provide them more loaves and fishes. Your majesty, please heal me also. But Jesus said to them, do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the son of humanity will give to you. Interesting words for him to say at a time when people are looking for leadership away from food droughts, away from the Roman Empire. And as we look at the gospel through the realities of our world today, we see a world where people stand in long lines for humanitarian aid. Many churches have now had to have food pantries as the biggest part of their ministry. For many of our brothers and sisters, eating our fill today does not mean eating anything tomorrow. Many feel that there is no food, and because there's no food, why do I even worry about eternal life? We live in a world where parents are whisking their children out of their beds in Palestine, in the Ukraine, in Guatemala, in El Salvador, and in Venezuela. And they are forced to do so because of hunger and security for their children and families. And they take these children on long, dangerous journeys for the promise of a better life, only to watch their children starve to death or be killed in the rubble when bombs have dropped on war-torn cities, or be lost and killed in jungles or in deserts. We cannot help but ask God to intervene. And many of us ask, how can we trust a God that allows our world to be in a time like this? My brothers and sisters, some things are worth complaining to God about. Sometimes asking God for assurance that God is still with us is understandable, even if appropriate. When Jesus answers, very truly I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw the signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves, he was not scolding the crowd for seeking bread because they were hungry. Jesus did say to us in Luke and Mark, ask and I, it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks will receive. Everyone who seeks will find. And the one who knocks on the door will find it open. Did he not say that? Did we not hear that or have heard that all our lives? So we know that Jesus is not saying that physical needs are unimportant here. In Matthew chapter 6, Jesus speaks of the food and drink and clothing, assuring his listeners that your heavenly Father knows all that you need. He knows these things and are promising that they who seek them will find them. But all he is saying is that we must seek God first. We must seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to us as well. But we must 
seek God's kingdom first. What I think that happened on that day is that Jesus was just disappointed that all they wanted was more earthly food. So Jesus then decided to challenge the crowd to raise their eyes and see beyond the physical realm. In John chapter 4, verse 34, Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. So what he's doing now is challenging the crowd to join him in that work and on his spiritual journey. In the Exodus story that we read in the first lesson, we can see exactly the same thing happening with Moses. For Moses, Aaron, and God too were probably very disappointed in the people who only expected to get three square meals every day, even in the desert, but did not trust that God the God who delivered them from slavery would also sustain them in that desert. Why is it that we find it so difficult to trust in God? Why do we settle only for signs of God's grace rather than seeing and expecting God to settle things for us? Why don't we see that God's grace rather than seeking things, brings us to God's immortal love. Why can we not love God with all our hearts and with all our minds and love our neighbors as yourselves, as God has asked us, and see that through that, all things will be made possible? Why can't we see that? Why can't we experience that after all this time? The reason is because we are a fearful and misguided people. Society has tricked us into thinking that we need more and more stuff. If we work hard physically, we will never be disappointed. Is that not what we said? Work hard, pull up yourself by your bootstraps, and you will attain everything. You won't be disappointed. We are told that we are an army of one. We need more and more to survive. We need more than just eternal life. And as a result, for only food that perishes, we work for only food that perishes, rather than food that endures for eternal life. Food that only the Son of Man can give us. Society never tells us to work hard for the kingdom of God. Have you ever heard that before? Were you ever taught that in school? Nobody ever says, work hard for the kingdom of God. They don't say that. They say, work hard to get your possessions. And as a result, we are all put on the wrong path. For us, enough is never enough. Because we always want more stuff. We need the new car. We need the new washing machine. We need the bigger house. More, more, more. As I wrote this sermon, I was reminded of the late Stephen Jobs. Many of us know that name. We know him as one of the most successful men of our time. He was an entrepreneur, inventor, business magnate, media proprietor, investor, all rolled up in one. He is a wonderful example for all. When you want to point to somebody that you want your children to emulate, he is probably at the top of the list. Be like him and you will be successful. Steve Jobs delivered a moving speech from his deathbed when he died. And I'd like to hear a little bit from it. Because all those years of running after wealth, money, and fame, when sickness struck, Stephen Jobs' final comments were about his admiration for his family and not about his wealth. Here are some of his last words. I have reached the pinnacle of success in the business world. In others' eyes, my life is an epitome of success. However, aside from my work, I have little joy. In the end, wealth is the only fact of life that I am accustomed to. At this moment, lying on my sickbed, 
and recalling my whole life, I realized that all the recognition and wealth that I took so much pride in have paled and become meaningless in the face of my impeding death. I can feel the breath of God and of death drawing close. Non-stop pursuit of wealth will only turn a person into a twisted being, a being just like myself. God gave us the sense to let us feel the love in everyone's heart, not the illusion brought about by wealth. The wealth that I have won in my life, I cannot bring with me. You should treasure the love of your family, the love of your spouse, the love of your friends, and treat yourself well and cherish others. Those were the last words in his last sermon from his bed. So how much is enough? And how do we make sure that we do it all right? These questions press harder and harder, especially when the stakes of war and peace, safety and security, food, water and health, the economy and the environment all are pressing on us. What must we do to perform the works of God in this war-torn world? As Christians, we are reminded that our life's goal is eternal life, the full and abundant life promised to us by our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. To achieve this, we need to make it through every day and every week. But how do we do that? In the Lord's Prayer, we ask for our daily bread, just enough for every day. It is enough to be faithful day by day and let the future take care of itself. It is enough to worry about only the troubles for the day and at the end, let the past be the past and let the future take care of itself. In other words, we are to trust in our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ and he will take care of you. Jesus responds to us just as he did to that crowd. This is the work of God that you believe in him who God has sent. To believe is to trust that God is doing something now that is new in that human he created, in the conditions and circumstances in the world that no human being can underestimate or can negate. Only Jesus the Christ can give us eternal life. He is God. He is the ego am I, the bread that fills all of our hunger and all of our thirst. So my brothers and sisters, let us work hard at trusting in Jesus, not trusting in making money. Let us work hard in loving our neighbors as ourselves, not in being an army of one. Let us not trust in killing or starving each other so that we can have bigger profits. Let us have faith and trust in Jesus so that he can let us be free to follow him, not because we achieve self-satisfying things, but because there is something in the world that we can maintain and give us peace of mind. Let us embrace God's redeeming will and restore the cosmos to what God originally created in humanity, to what God originally intended. Such faith and trust does not come easy, and I'm not telling you that it does. It is hard work. But let us put God first in everything that we do and in everything that we love. My brothers and sisters, the last verse of that hymn that I began with and I'm closing with, it says, Trust in your Lord Jesus. I know he will never let me fall. I am choosing to trust in the Lord Jesus forever and for all. Amen.
Let us all turn to page six in our bulletin and let us reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God. God the Father, your will for all people is health and salvation. We praise you and thank you, O oh Lord. God the Son, you came that we might have life and might have it more abundantly. We praise you and thank you, O oh Lord. God the Holy Spirit, you made your, our bodies the temple of your presence. Holy Trinity, one God, in you we live and move and have our being. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. Lord, grant your healing grace on all who are sick, injured or disabled, that they may be made whole. Grant to all who seek your guidance and to all who are lonely, anxious or despondent, in knowledge of your will, and the awareness of your presence. Yes, Lord, right. Mend the broken relationships and restore those in emotional distress to the soundness of mind and the serenity of spirit. Yes, Lord, right. Bless physicians, nurses, and all others who minister to the suffering. Grant them wisdom and skill, sympathy and patience. Grant to the dying peace and a holy death, and uphold by their grace and consolation of your Holy Spirit those who are bereaved. Restore to wholeness whatever is broken by human sin in our lives, in our nation, and in the world. You are the Lord who does wonders. With you, O oh Lord, is the well of life. Hear us, O oh Lord of life. Let us pray. Almighty God, giver of life and health, send your blessing on all who are sick, <coughs> and upon those who minister to them, that all weakness may be vanquished by the triumphs of the risen Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbors. <clears throat> Amen. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. 
by what we have done, by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with all heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, and strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, through the water baptism, has raised us from sin and into new life. And by the power of your life-giving spirit, ever cleanse and sanctify your people. Bless, we pray you, this water for the service of your holy church. And grant that it may be a sign of the cleansing and the refreshment of your grace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Cleanse me from my sin and I shall be made pure. Wash me, and I shall be clean indeed. I saw the water proceeding out of the temple from its right side, and it flowed all to those who were near it, and they were saved. Hallelujah. Those of you who would like to receive the oil of healing and blessing, please come forward now. Lord, 
I am going to the name of God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit. May God love to continue to flow through you, and He continue to strengthen you in the ministry of the Lord. May He continue to make your heart strong and filled with the love. May He inspire you in the ministry that He gave you for your life. May He continue to make you always that caring, loving man whose office to take care of you. Be your strength. I bless you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. I bless you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. I bless you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. I bless you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. I bless you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. I bless you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. I bless you in the name of God the Father, God the Son. I bless you in the name of the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. I bless you in the name of the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. I bless you in the name of the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. I bless you in the name of the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. I bless you in the name of the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. I bless you in the name of the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. All that is righteous first. And everybody points to us and says, You know what's wrong? Am I blessing you to love your mother? Love the Lord. Love the Lord. Love the The peace of the Lord be always with you. I'm blind to the first one.
um, export. Oh. Now, many of you know uh, Alan has previously been with me for the uh, anniversary of the special friend that we have met. Alan and his family also ask me to pray for the congregation of the same floor and floors. Uh, it will appear that they have been signed. Uh, I received the invitation this week that the dean and the um, historian of the church will be doing this along all the processions, starting the arrangements to the furniture of the church. So pray for their congregations and um, that they can find a new home where they can worship. Um, any other? No? Yes. I asked my friend in Arizona, Arizona recently. So we are going to make a group to a challenge from the park. It's called Wacky Wacky Wacky. And they had a remarkable group of women. And a remarkable cruise. And the first night of the cruise, they tell everybody to go to the you have to tell one thing about yourself that will make other people who will come up and talk to you. This woman, short as five foot two, stood up and said, I slept with 100 men in one night. <laughs> and I said, well, if you keep this cheap. <laughs> and then she was in charge of the forestry service, and she had to get all the sleeping bags for every fire event. She really did. But it wasn't a Christian woman. And she needs our prayers to regulate that heart. And her name is Boyer. Yes. Sister Dimension, in gathering uh, for the There's a part to be back in session. Please be done by the show with the light on here. And please be generous for the uniforms and for books and all the items we need to be completed in order to be there. In the fall, that's the thing that we know. Please be done. Please be generous for the work. I uh, sometimes ask for prayers for the two women. Always, like I'd like to keep the QW, as well as our men in uniform who got it throughout the day. We will keep an eye on that. Are there any other? The walk in love is Christ's love as he gave to him as the most high. The hymn for the, which is all he is? 51. 5 1. <laughs>
We continue our sports. <laughs> Continue our service on page 361 in the Book of Common Prayer. For those of you at home, or page 9 of your bulletin. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, in fulfillment of his true promise, the Holy Spirit came down from heaven, enlightening upon the disciples to teach them and lead them into all truth, uniting peoples of many tongues in the confession of one faith and giving to the church the power to serve you as a royal priesthood and to preach the gospel to all nations. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We continue on page 10 of your bulletin, page 10. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share in our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. And on the night that he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. <clears throat> and after supper he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins, whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, I believe, help thou my unbelief. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. 
We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer to you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also. And in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glories are yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed them in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Thank you. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The body of Christ. The blood of Christ. All Christians are welcome to your pew. Those of you who would like to sit in the cup of the I will welcome. The body of Christ, the body of Christ, the body of Christ, the body of the body of Christ, the body of The body of Christ is very The body of The body of Christ is very The body of Christ is very The body of Christ is very The 
body parts of the liver. The body parts of the liver. The body parts of the liver. The body parts of the liver. The body parts of the liver. The body parts of the liver. The body parts of the liver. The body parts of the liver. We continue our service on page 365 of the Book and Common Prayer and page 12 of your bulletin. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. On page 80, 815, I'm going to say the prayer for the human family. O oh God, you made us in our own image and redeemed us through Jesus your Son. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infects our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in the bonds of love and work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purpose on this earth that in your good time all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge of the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. The recessional hymn, hymn number 699, 699, Jesus, lover of my soul. Thank you.
with the God of Abraham, Isaac, Ruth, and Sarah, continue to bless us as we struggle with who you are and what it is you want us to do. May your Holy Spirit and love infect our hearts and continue to teach us your ways. May we eventually learn to trust you so that we can go out into the world and turn it into the kingdom of God by loving you with all our hearts and loving our neighbors as ourselves. Guide us as we try to learn these things through this week. And now and always, amen. amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Have a wonderful and blessed week, and I hope to see you all next week.